We are so grateful to have you here this afternoon. This has been a wonderful journey for me, and it's been a wonderful journey for Pilgrim Church. Long before I came to Pilgrim Church, Pilgrim Church was involved in the community. Part of the reason I came to Pilgrim was because it was involved in the community. That's a very important part of parish ministry for me. Pilgrim has been through a lot, partly because we've been willing to be out in the community. And the community has had our back throughout. Today, this afternoon, we're celebrating the relationship between Pilgrim Church and the wider community and the wider church. For me, it's a time of love letters to make sure that you all know how much I love you, how much Pilgrim Church loves you, and for Pilgrim Church to feel that love right on back, as I know it does. So let us begin. We have really not much form and fancy, except that we'll spend maybe an hour here in the sanctuary telling stories. And then we're going to go into the parlor where the food will be. Which is why we all came, right? For the food. Sitting up here with me is Josephine Simmons, who is the moderator of Pilgrim Church. She and I have been working closely together this past year since she was elected at our last annual meeting and I'm very grateful for her support. Later on in the program she will be speaking. I would call up now Sue Sporty who is the chair of Pilgrim's um, Ministry of Christian Outreach. Um, Christian Outreach is the way we organizationally connect to the wider community. Sue. So I'm going to partly duplicate what Sally said. First of all, I would like to welcome you all. Um, I am the current chair of the Ministry of Christian Outreach, which is a blend, believe it or not, of evangelism and social activism under one hat. So we are a fairly um, busy ministry. But today I want to talk about celebrating three things, and Sally pretty much laid them out. First, we do want to celebrate the leadership of Pastor Sally Iger as a leadership in the church and in the community. Second, we want to celebrate the history of Pilgrim Church as part, an active part, of the larger church and the wider community. And third, we want to celebrate what we see as Pilgrim's commitment to continuing that role as we move forward under different leadership. And I'd like to just spend a little bit of a moment on each of those. First, Sally's community leadership, it's known, or if it's not, it should be well known. She's past president of the Community of Congregations. She's won awards from the Leaders Network for her social activism. And she's been a visible presence. Any of you who have marched for anything at Rise or Black Lives Matter or the Sanctuary City Rally, any of those things, Sally, along with members of Pilgrim, has been an active presence that has helped focus us. That's, of course, partly due to her unique gifts and predilections, but it's, it is, as she said, it is also due to Pilgrim's history. When we called Sally, front and center on that call, and for those of you who, who don't know about a call, um, it's like a job description, but front and center in that job description was making us, making us, giving us a public face out and about in the community. So it isn't just Sally's gifts, it's that, that's what we were looking for. Um, our pilgrims' uh, commitment and activism kind of ebbs and flows as the life of the congregation does, but it has always been a part of the DNA. So we do need 
need to celebrate that part of Pilgrim. And that we also need to celebrate that as we have supported you all and you all have supported us all, that all is going to continue. <laughs> and if you all notice us all slipping away from that commitment, you call and call us on it because it is our desire that no matter who our leader is, we will be part of an active part of the community. Thank you. I would say we're in good hands. Yes. I would like to invite Reverend Dr. Ira Akri to join me up here. Ira is the pastor of Greater St. John Bible Church in Austin. He is also co-chair of the Leaders Network. He is my brother and my colleague and my friend. Jam that people would be all outside. 
It's unfortunate that we as a people don't know how to give people their flowers when they're alive. So I commend you so very much. If you don't mind, give yourselves a hand. This is awesome. <laughs> I'm going to read this poem and I'm, I'm on my way to my seat. <laughs> one little rose. I would rather have one little rose from the garden of a friend than to have the choices of flowers for my life on earth must end. I'd rather have a smile from friends I know that are true than tears shed around my casket when this world I bid adieu. Bring me all your flowers today, whether pink, white, or red. I'd rather have one blossom now than a truckload when I'm dead. God's work, godly work, and yet with humility, a 
appreciate, in some sense, the impermanence of all that we do in this life. And so trusting God to take care of matters has been a lesson, a lesson I thank you for, your voice in my ears over the years. Thank you for your wisdom. And lastly, I want to acknowledge your commitment to community at all levels, including seeking companions and lifelong learning to keep our ministries sharpened, lay and clergy alike. I'm mindful of the countless times I could count on you to be at CTS or at some other prophetic justice-making endeavor. Modeling and knowing that our learning, all of us, is ever unfolding if we choose and that we need each other. And so thank you for modeling that commitment to community. I see in your witness and your public ministries this natural connection between a commitment to health and a commitment to true justice making. Which brings me to close putting on more tightly one of my hats the Chicago Coalition of Welcoming Churches, which I have long chaired, and which Pilgrim joined in 2017 during your ministry partnership. Now I've known Pilgrim and Blessed Pilgrims here for many, many years, and so I know your faithful journey of justice making on matters for the LGBTQ and A communities. I, I know that witness and treasure it. The coalition is blessed that you have formally joined our work coalition itself, 17 some years old, pilgrims wandering through the wilderness trying to figure out what is our big witness with limited resources, right? And so we need each other and faithful colleagues in solidarity as you have modeled. What a joy to mark this day by remembering that we stitch our stories of your faith and your impact together in here and in that room there. Remembering what God has done here at Pilgrim, is doing, and will do in your respective lives. And so finally, I see that Pilgrim's website currently says this. We see much of God's holy creation of human spirit right here at Pilgrim. We celebrate that diversity. Siblings are a wider community of Pilgrims. Acknowledge this moment, this transition for you, for Sally, as one moment in a long process of sacred conversation. Holy creation, you know, is hard, hard whether it be on race, or LGBTQ issues, environment, or what have you. Henri Nouwen says that true spiritual community is community that's safe enough to encounter the sacred. Safe enough, sadly. Grace-filled enough to be disturbed, to be shaken up, and even undone. Not in judgment, not in tearing down, or for tearing down, but for building up. So thank you for your resilience and your wisdom and for your commitments to community, healthy community, bringing health and justice making together. We rejoice in the stories to be shared this day and all that will be carried from here as we part. Blessed be. Thank you, Sally. Thank you, folks from Pilgrim. 
Sally said this would be an opportunity for sharing of love letters, and so I have one here I'd like to read from. Uh, Sally mentioned I am Don Clark. I'm the acting president of CTS, and it's truly an honor to be invited to offer some brief remarks at this retirement celebration for her. And I thank her for the opportunity to express the gratitude of Chicago Theological Seminary for the work in ministry that Sally has performed. And also, I'm a uh, former congregant from Sally's time serving as pastor at Glenview Community Church, and so I feel personally honored to be invited to celebrate with her and you. I've been involved with CTS for a number of years, serving as its general counsel and its chair of the board of trustees. But the relationship between Pilgrim and CTS predates even my time at CTS. Pilgrim has long been a congregation that attracts CTS graduates. Dr. Peter Lucky served as minister for more than two decades ago. Dr. Michael Montgomery and Reverend Benjamin Reynolds both served as interim ministers here. And in 2010, when you called Reverend Sally Iberg, we were excited. Not only did one of our graduates have a job, <laughs> is always a good thing. But CTS also had the opportunity to continue to build and grow our relationship with Pilgrim. And Sally did not miss an opportunity for Pilgrim and CTS to be true partners in ministry and in the work of justice and mercy. As dear friend of CTS and member of Pilgrim's who sporty put it, Sally has been an ardent booster Students and graduates alike have found themselves drawn to this community. Sally, with this congregation, has directed students to CTS. She's created space and stood alongside them as they discerned their call with the in-care committees. And when the opportunity arose, she's affirmed their call to ministry and ordained them here in this place. Sally has nurtured and cared for CTS alumni and friends as well as they work for justice outside the walls of this sanctuary, serving as missionaries and as chaplains and even as CTS board members. For the past several years, you've invited CTS to be part of Pilgrim, bringing professors to preach and provide presentations. You've demonstrated the importance of theological education, not only for future ministers, but for the wider community as well. And in turn, this congregation has expressed its sincerest gratitude for the work of CTS through annual giving and support of student scholarships and programming, for which we are incredibly grateful. At CTS, it's our mission to develop individuals for the next generation of religious leadership. Through coursework and field education, through community life and clinical pastoral education, we aim to equip students with the ability to think critically and theologically, to act compassionately, to work collaboratively, transform the world toward greater justice and mercy. It is a lot to strive for. But Sally, you truly are a leader for the next. And so we thank you and we congratulate you.
Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Peace and blessings to all. And let me say, uh, happy retirement <laughs> to my friend Sal. Um, boy, I tell you, this is uh, such a wonderful occasion. Glad to be here. Good to see some friends. And, um, Pastor Acre, I hope you'll give me your two or three minutes. <laughs> um, so glad to be here. And, and, and like uh, really Pastor Acre has, has mentioned, uh, we all met uh, Sally and I and so many others met on the same occasion uh, that dreadful day um, a couple of years ago when there was a shooting and a mass murder, if you will, at Mother Emanuel Church in North Carolina. And uh, we were coming together for a unity prayer service. And um, I must say that um, upon arriving there, uh, I want to say first of all, thank you, Sally, because um, and that was the first time in my life that up close I actually saw a white woman full of passion, <laughs> full of spunk and vigor, standing for justice. I knew there was some out there, but I never experienced one up close. <laughs> And I must say, I wish for those who wasn't there, I really wish, and maybe you already know this, Miss Sally, but for me, it was amazing. Because she stood there with such conviction and such power and such uh, compassion. And, I mean, her voice, I mean, she did what uh, God said, Isaiah 58, verse 1, uh, lift up your voice, cry loud and spare not, lift your voice like a trumpet and show their people their sins. And she just really just lashed out against the evil of such, and I just stood there with my mouth wide open. I just could not believe it. I never experienced someone that up close, and I went home. True story, I went home. I told my wife, I said, wife, you won't believe it. <laughs> now, my wife thought I was crazy, but really, I said, listen, that was just, I forget her name, but she was on fire. <laughs> and I never forget that, because it was so, and I'm sure she was just being who Sally is. I mean, just being the Passionate, the lover, the, uh, the loving, compassionate woman that she is, standing up for what is right, for what is true, standing for justice. It was just like, I, I was just amazed. And so thank you for being uh, one who was just full of compassion, willing to stand up, uh, because it, it, left, it gave me hope. It really gave me hope that we're not alone in this fight for justice. It's not just us who are black and brown, who are you know, in this fight, and the, but there are others who don't look like us, don't come from the same neighborhood, but we're all in the same struggle. Now, it's, again, it's something I kind of knew in theory, but I didn't know it was for real until I met Sally. And so thank you, Sally, uh, for being that type of uh, compassionate voice. But I want to say this with your retirement. I want to let you know, I know your retirement, you're retiring from compassion, all that kind of thing, and that's, that's good, and we're here to celebrate that. And it's wonderful you did the work, well done, and all of that. But I want to let you know that freedom fighters don't retire. <laughs> yeah, we, we don't quite have that luxury of retirement. We just make adjustments. Okay, we just make adjustments as we go along in life. And so uh, I know you're retiring, and I know you have a uh, looking forward to the next season, next phase of your life. And, and but I want you to know. Even though um, you're retiring in one sense, uh, I look forward to your voice. Uh, your voice is still needed uh, in this city, in this uh, state, in this country. To lift up a voice and cry out, uh, cry out loud, and um, so we need your, your voice to continue. I look forward to doing that, and thank you uh, for all that you've done. Uh, but I want to close. Uh, there's an African proverb uh, that says, "Sticks in a bundle are unbreakable." And Sally, I want to say thank you for being one of those sticks that make us unbeatable and unbreakable in this fight for social justice and women's rights. Thank you for being one of those sticks that help us stay together, stick together, whether black, white, or brown, that we continue to fight, lift up our voice, and work for what is right in the city, in the state, in this country, and living. living. So thank you for being the sticks in the bundle. We're unbeatable and we're unbreakable. Amen. Thank you, Sally. Six in a bundle, right? 
It may be a different six each time. But as long as we know we're not alone, we're going to be okay. As long as we know that someone's willing to lift their voice, we know we're going to be okay. As long as we can count on each other to show up and to stand up and to speak up, we're going to be okay. That's what this day is about. We're going to be okay. I would like to invite Dan Haley, who's the editor and publisher of the Wednesday Journal since its inception on July 31st, 1980. And you were like 12, right? <laughs> Those of us who um, type for a living, it's a little intimidating coming after the uh, preachers and the ministers. <laughs> but, um, it's good to be back in this sanctuary. Um, Mr. Clark mentioned Peter Lucky, and 30 years ago, uh, my family and I were members of Pilgrim for a few years, and they were very, very good years. About six years ago, I was invited to Pilgrim to be part of a small panel and we met downstairs, and it was something um, on the order of uh, trying to seek clarity around goals and missions for the church. And a, and a key piece of that had to do with Pilgrim's place in the community and identifying that community as being uh, both Oak Park and Austin and, um, and the West Side. That was a happy occasion um, for me. Um, for the last 30 years, our company, Wednesday Journal, has published um, both the Oak Park River Forest paper, but also the Austin Weekly News. And so we've had this um, connection that's been strong and has been weak and has been better and worse um, in Austin. But to be in a congregation of people who wanted to actively talk about um, having a, a, a sincere connection in Austin was very powerful to me. And what I remember most specifically that afternoon was a woman who may be sitting here. Um, as we got toward the end, and people were saying, now we need no practical ideas. And what she said was, I don't want to do things for people in Austin. I want to know people in Austin. And I thought that is a declarative statement that is not often heard in Oak Park. We are good with coat drives and can goods. We're not so good at facing the genuine, profound fear um, that Oak Park, that white people have of predominantly black communities. And that fear is palpable today. There is also on the side of Austin toward Oak Park, long uh, suspicion of Oak Park and its motives and its intentions. And so I left that day a few years back and wondered, you know, what would happen. And impressed by Sally Iver, who I had not known at that point. And, and things began to, to move. But it wasn't until this day that we are all talking about um, in 2015, after the uh, massacre in Charleston at uh, Mother Emanuel, that a service was called at uh, Reverend Hatch's uh, equally beautiful sanctuary over on Washington Boulevard. And I went down to see, okay, what's this going to be like? Had no, no particular preconceptions. And from my memory, there were, and I, I may have missed people, but there was Reverend Iver, there was Rabbi Weiss, there was Reverend Taylor. There were a lot of Oak Parkers in, that, in those pews. Um, and it was one of the most powerful occasions in my life. Um, and I think in the lives of, of, of Reverend Fields and Reverend Ackery and, and Marshall Hatch 
is, is how I sense it. And then and what you have expressed. There is this suspicion. What, what, why are you here? What are your motives? Is this just lip service? Is this just a way to pass an afternoon? But that afternoon was so profound. The words were so strong. The sense of community on that altar were so real. Um, I think it has changed something. You know, there's no simple panacea. The problems are complex and Racism is powerful, and, and uh, we've we got a long, long ways to go. But that afternoon, with, with Reverend Iver, um, I felt changed. And I felt hopeful in terms of what could be ahead for two communities that I have enormous respect and love for. Um, there is this barrier in Austin Boulevard that we've made up. It's not real. It wasn't real when I was a child, and these two communities were fully integrated. We went back and forth to Austin and thought River Forest was a bunch of snooty people. <laughs> Austin and Oak Park were our neighborhood, and it can be that again. And, and the key to it is for each of us to reach out to know people and to see past the violence. It's real. It's horrible. It's got to end. But it is not Austin. It is not Austin. It is uh, a neighborhood of good people working hard against a lot of odds. And people like Reverend Tyber, uh, Rabbi Weiss, Reverend Taylor, uh, joining in sincerely, continuously in something like the Leaders Network is about our best hope. So thank you to Pilgrim, thank you to Reverend Iver. upon us by this very special partnership. 
I didn't know that Pilgrim Congregational Church would immediately welcome us as family and continue to do so. I didn't know that the church would continuously donate rehearsal space as it has for the past 13 years. I didn't know that we would perform in this magnificent space year after year to a very large, dedicated fan base of both our choir, but also of Pilgrim. I didn't know that we would have the opportunity to sing each November on Stewardship Sunday as a small token of our thanks for everything Pilgrim has done for us. So if all that wasn't enough, and, I, and it was, okay, I was fortunate enough to meet Reverend Sally Eiberg in 2010. While I'm not a member of Pilgrim, and didn't have as much time with her as many of you have, the November service in which we sang each year provided me with just a small taste of all that Sally Eiberg gives to the church and to the community. Her sermons have often brought me to tears. They provided comfort when the community greatly needed it. Her concern for others was profound. Her sense of humor was inserted just at the right times. But most importantly, her passion for Pilgrim Congregational Church and its congregants is unmistakably evident. Sally, I was very sad to learn of your retirement for selfish reasons, of course. I hope to see you in our audience at our concerts when you're in town. I'll miss your words of wisdom in coming November services, and I will always remember your kindness to our chorus and to me. I wish you only the best in this new segment of your life's journey, and I do hope our paths cross.
from that day forward, uh, we began to see the barriers broken down. I can almost uh, remember when the faith leaders from Oak Park and River Forest came in the West Garfield Park, and there was uh, Brother Haley there. I mean, he was salivating. <laughs> it was like, this is what I've been waiting on. And from there, of course, Sally is an instrumental part of us continuing to forge relationships and build one community. So it's very difficult for me to be sad because I happen to know that part of what's happening here is that Sally will have more time for the Leaders Network. <laughs> ministry together, and by the way, all of you who are members of Pilgrim Congregational Church, I want you to know you're our cousins as well. God bless you. Thank you. that we have walking with us. 
us, the Reverend Dr. Verdi Powers, who is Associate Conference Minister of the Illinois Conference of the United Church of Christ, serving the Chicago Metropolitan Association. Try getting that on a business card. Verdi, you are a blessing to us. Please come. For your presence, for your voice, 
we say thank you. The Chicago Metropolitan Association is better because of you. The whole church is better because of Pastor Sally. We want you to know that we in the Chicago Metropolitan Association, Illinois Conference of the United Church of Christ, we love you, we appreciate you, and we pray God's continued blessings upon you, your family, and your future ministry endeavors. Thank you so much, and God bless you. Sally's great leadership. Uh, many of you know our work uh, through your volunteer efforts. Um, you have been with Housing Forward uh, for 26 years. Uh, that is how long we have been here in this community serving those without a home and need safe, warm shelter. 26 years ago, Pilgrim was right there with us. You were eager, and you were willing to take on the task of staffing one of our shelter sites and providing meals just a few blocks away at First United Methodist on the fourth Thursdays and the following Friday mornings. And for the last 26 years, members of Pilgrim have set aside their Thanksgiving to be at the pet shelter without disruption or hassle. So thank you all for that. Those collective efforts and the efforts of other volunteers in this community have helped to shelter and to help rehouse over 17,000 people in those 26 years. It really does go without saying that we are living in a time of unrest and division. We know that the issues of social injustice and inequality are plaguing our communities and our country, and this community right here in Oak Park is no different. And these times require great leaders. Here in Oak Park, we have people that stand in lines each night just to receive shelter. Many more stand in line each week just to receive a bag of groceries. This is 2018. It's not 1933. It's not 1964. And yet there seems to be a constant need to raise awareness, to be the voice, and to fight for those that struggle just to have their basic needs met. These are not issues that get won overnight, that's for certain. And they won't dissipate unless we as a community bring not only our collective action to helping our neighbors, but to be that voice that creates change. Sally, you have led this congregation's effort to educate around the issues of social and economic injustice and to build bridges, not just here in Oak Park, but across that invisible line into the awesome community. It is difficult work and not one that everyone 
is eager to champion, but you have stepped up to the plate and shown great leadership. Thank you. It takes resilience, it takes attention, it takes long-term investment and perseverance, and you have shown that. Thank you for being a champion to those in the faith communities. I will certainly miss you, we will miss you, your community leadership, your wisdom, and your passion to provide a voice for those who need it. So on behalf of those at Housing Forward, I wish you the very, very best in your retirement, and don't be a stranger.
May we all, our faith communities, walk together, strengthen one another, care for one another, and support one another. Here in Oak Park, River Forest, and Austin, it is good to be one community together, and you led the way. Thank you. Blessings on your retirement.
I think she just had it with us, Oak Parkers, talking all the time about our heritage of diversity and inclusion. Why are we always looking backwards over some perceived glory day when black and white communities still don't interact? When, we may, when our neighbors suffer under systemic oppression and we turn a blind eye? We might work in the same office, but we don't eat together. We don't worship together. We don't come together as people of faith to work towards systemic change. And I think Sally had had enough of that. So she used her platform as the president of the community of congregations to do something about it. Working to change the name and the focus of that storied organization so that it didn't become some antiquated castle surrounded by a moat, but became something more like a bridge over that virtual Atlantic Ocean that is Austin Boulevard to so many of Parkers. Sally joined in the Leaders Network in Austin, which you've heard a lot about today. And she did that to learn more about what her colleagues were doing. She asked questions. She listened. She invited dialogue. She made friends. She introduced her old friends to her new friends. You've heard Dr. Marshall Hatch of New Mount Pilgrim Missionary Baptist Church call her cousin, and I've heard him call her cousin for two years now. <laughs> Partly that's because of the Pilgrim connection, right? He's from Pilgrim Missionary Baptist, and Sally is here from Pilgrim Congregational. But it's also because Sally is a spiritual pilgrim, believing in and searching for a better place beyond her knowing. As Kierkegaard describes it, people who call themselves believers are actually pilgrims, strangers and aliens in the world because faith literally means what I am seeking is not here. Faith expressly signifies the deep, strong, blessed restlessness that drives the believer so that we cannot settle down and rest in the world. A believer travels forward. So Sally pushed forward with her pilgrimage towards connectivity and thereby showed us laggards a way forward. A way to reach across an artificial barrier and our own complacency to find friendship and communion and a starting point for change. Pilgrims are persons in motion, passing through territories not their own. But the point of traveling, as poet R.S. Thomas tells us, is not to arrive, but to return home Laden with pollen you shall work up into honey the mind feeds on. I'm going to say that again. The point of travel is not to arrive but to return home. Laden with pollen you shall work up into honey the mind feeds on. So in the end, I'm not worried about how Sally's going to fare in retirement. I'm not worried that she's going to sit in a rocking chair and dream about her glory days. She is a true pilgrim. I believe she will continue to press forward, gathering pollen and sharing the honey she has worked up for all our minds to feed on. Retirement is not the end of the road. It is the beginning of the open highway. So ride, Sally, ride. <laughs> Stand up straight. 
And we also come here today to applaud the work of our immediate and our wider community partners. Those of you who have spoken today and some of you who are in the audience and did not speak. And we are celebrating our long-time relationships with all of you partners. There's a considerable evidence base that supports the reasons why Pilgrim is committed to continuing those relationships. Let's just start with, we all need each other. Is that a good place to start? Because we are partners, we can better address many issues facing us today. This list that I'm going to go through is certainly not all inclusive, but here are just a few examples of the partnerships and things that we've done together with many of you who have already spoken. Issues of poverty, housing, and employment discrimination, lack of affordable health care, and due process and social justice. These cross over many of the organizations in this room. Pilgrim, though, has a team that serves meals to the homeless. We, can, we can't do that without Housing Forward. They opened a way for us to provide meals to the homeless and to help them accomplish their mission. We couldn't do that here, but we can help them do it. Uh, I'm sorry. We collect food items in our sanctuary monthly, and we can do that because of the Oak Park River Forest Food Pantry. We collect the food and we have somewhere to take it because it supports their program. Issues of exclusion in our society based on race, color, sexual orientation, cultural differences. We know there are those in this partnership of like mind, such as the Chicago Coalition of Welcoming Churches. And Pilgrim has a program that informs and ed educates our congregation on race and another program that informs and educates our congregants on the LGBTQ community. Issues of disadvantaged geographical areas that often do not receive adequate city, state, and federal resources. Following the lead of the UCC, Pilgrim provided support to the wider, wider community that were affected by natural disasters in recent months. Issues of overall fairness, and led by Pastor Sally, who partnered with the Leaders Network. In addition, we invited a member of that network to come and actually minister to one of our groups, because we needed another voice. We were, we were too close to the issue. And he was just welcomed with open arms and gave us exactly what we needed. That's what partnership is. We reach out because you know that you're there. Because we are partners, we can and do involve excluded groups at different stages. Because we are partners, we can highlight the contribution and assets that each brings to implementing solutions. And that's what we're doing today. It's great that we are all in this room together. Pilgrim promotes the work of our partners in our weekly bulletin and our monthly publication. Because we are partners, we have a more like joined up approach to address those issues mentioned above by me and by many of you who have already spoken. So we provide a place during worship service for organizations such as Arise to come in and share their message and their mission with our congregation so that we can move that forward. There is comfort in knowing that you have our back. And we are, when we are in the need of spiritual and emotional support, we know you're going to be there for us because you've proven it over and over again. The community of congregations is always there for us, 
as we feel that all of you are. Pilgrim is uplifted by music when the St. Juliet Choir shares our space and our Chancellor Choir Director. <laughs> and yes, we do rely on the rest then to help then uh, help tell our story, all of our stories. We've got to get the message out. Because we come together demographically, we are more powerful. One of us standing alone trying to carry a banner, it will get some attention, but when we're all together, we are just more powerful. I think we can all agree that each of us has been more effective because we have come together as partners. Pilgrim today makes a commitment to continue this relationship. All of you reinforce Pilgrim's message in all that you do. You give us an outlet to further our commitment to providing spiritual and social justice support to our congregation, our immediate and wider community. Today, we again reinforce our commitment to continue to be an outlet for you and all of your programs. Our Pastor Sally has done much to show us the way and we will continue along that path. Thank you so much. Thank you all for spending your Sunday afternoon with us. I hope you'll step over into the parlor and enjoy some delicious finger food. It has been a joy this journey we have been on. Keep on keeping on. Amen. Amen.